Now today I'd like to talk about the Talbots in Malahide. The Talbots arrived in 1184. Since then, their house was occupied by Talbots for, uh, for 800 years, until 1976. There was a slight break during Cromwell's time when they had to leave for a short period, they went to Connacht and came back. Now, there was 30 lords then since then. Seems not that many, but that 30 lords spans the 800 years. When um, my parents arrived in 1939, the Talbot in residence was Lord James Boswell Talbot. His wife was Lady Joyce Talbot. She was actually an actress that he married. And um, she was quite a bit younger than him. And in fact, she didn't die until 1980. But she did leave the estate after her husband died, and she used to visit in odd time coming back. She was a nice lady too, actually, and uh, very friendly. I remember she invited us as little kids into She had a caravan for some funny reason, and she invited us up into the caravan to have afternoon tea. When I was fin finished drinking my tea, I put my finger into my cup to just get the sugar. <laughs> and she looked at me. She said, oh, is that what you do? <laughs> They had no children, so the property and the title of Lord of Malahide went to a cousin Milo Talbot. So, since 1948-49, the last of the Talbots to live there were brother and sister, Lord Milo and his sister Rose. Now, Milo Talbot, he was a strange individual. He's often described, actually, as being very clever, but very aloof. And he was a diplomat. He had always had a big interest in botany had a beautiful botanical garden, really, in Malahide. Some very rare plants from all over the world. He would be around the garden always. He spent loads of time out in the garden, and he would be digging away there with um, putting in bits of snips of plants and all sorts of things, and categorising them and putting labels on them and all that sort of thing. Rose Talbot, now, she was... Um, Milo, was a, as I said, was aloof. Now, Rose was a little more friendly, but we as kids, of course, were wary of her because our mother said, you know, leave her alone. I mean, you see her out walking the dog, don't be going up to her in an iron or anything like that. She had um, a poodle, always. She loved driving. She had her car and she drove it herself and she loved driving. And it was known that somebody was standing at a bus stop. Now, the, the buses wouldn't be all that frequent in those days, I suppose. But um, she would stop and give them a lift into the city. No bother to her. And she'd have a chat. So she was going from that point of view. Another interesting thing about Rose Talbot was she became a member of the Samaritans. When we heard this much years much later on, we were wondering now what people thought, you know, they rang up the Samaritans because they were feeling suicidal and they got this plummy English accent. Uh, how successful she was or otherwise, I don't know, but certainly she tried her best. As kids, one of the main things was every Christmas, there was a Christmas party for all the staff and their children and it was held in the Great Hall and on the Minstrel Gallery in the Great Hall Santa Claus used to come out and he would go on to the balcony and he would throw down presents to the kids and everybody had a lovely meal and rice chat and all the families and off we went home. They did take an interest in everybody and I remember for example at one stage they came along and they gave us a television in the early days of television which was quite a treat. Another nice gesture was my father he was a great man for a bicycle but when he got into his 50s and he wasn't so fit they actually bought him a car for his own use and again had, I thought that was very nice of them so they did take an interest in people. My father died in 1972 and Lord Talbot died the year after 1973 uh, and in fact he died on board a ship he got a heart attack or whatever he was in the Mediterranean somewhere I think again he was off looking for plants or whatever. They had no children like a lot of big houses and castles in Ireland at the time the income from the farm estate no longer paid for the upkeep of the castle on its grounds. So Fitgall County Council bought the castle for, I think, a million pounds, which was very little for the huge size of the castle, even then. Rose Talbot, Talbot she went to Tasmania. The Talbots had a place in Tasmania, again called Malahide in Fingal. Huge big ranch. I think there's 40,000 sheep or something on it. And she lived out there quite happily. She came over every year about once a year for regularly for years and she used to always meet up with my mother again another nice touch and she would take my mother out to tea down at the Grand Hotel until Rose died and she died then in 2009 and um, the, the, the Tasmanian estate she left it to again a distant cousin now well, that was the end of Rose and Milo and that really concludes my story about what I knew about the Talbots <laughs>